Slayer Postal here. So today we're going to be taking a look at a couple battles that I had. Uh, trying to actually fix my drivers. <laughs> What's funny is I like that the recording isn't nearly as bad as um, how it was in gameplay. So I was taking out a plane that I figured I could have an okay battle in even with the skippiness. Now you might be able to tell in the background that everything is a little choppy. And <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm looking at myself in the original video going, God dang it. Um, but I figured, you know what the heck, let's just try to try to be somewhat effective. I took out the Blenheim. This is the tier four British heavy fighter. I absolutely love all the British heavy fighters. Um, I really do. There's just a difference between them and the American and the German heavy fighters. Not that they're necessarily better by any means. Um, at face value, they, they might actually be a little bit worse. But I like their ability to um, do a little bit of everything. All right, so we're taking out the, the tier four British heavy fighter, mainly because I figured if, if uh, the game was gonna be skippy like it is, I mean, like I said, I'm glad the recording isn't too crazy. Um, that I would still be able to be semi-effective and not completely spaz out. Um, and so, yeah, it's Tier 4. Like, I don't fly Tier 4 a whole lot because... I don't find it a challenge. Um, the, the shame of that is... Is there are... Um, really good planes down tier four and below um, obviously there are seal clubbing type planes like man the skipping this is gonna make my my eyeballs pop right now <laughs> um, XP 31s and things like that at tier two uh, most people tend to think that the BF 110 C-6 which is a tier four premium sniper cannon type plane is the ooh it's skipping again is um, you know, the, the overpowered tier four plane. And I'm not really sure it is. I mean, I guess it could be if you've got a pilot that's built around accuracy. Um, you know, you've got crazy range on that. But as far as tech tree planes are concerned, both the tier four heavies that are that are currently available, the Blenheim here and the BF-110B are actually quite good. Uh, a lot of it just has to do with reasonably strong firepower mixed with pretty poor bots just kind of allow you to um, own situations right so what are we doing here we're just kind of going back and forth we need it we're, we're in a heavy fighter what's the mantra with heavy fighters a b c always be capturing um yeah i did uh go there and take out the two enemies the two humans um, because taking out humans at tier 4 and below is even more important simply because they're the only things that are going to be really competent. The bots at tier 4 and below are, are meant to be um, meant to be low quality so that way new players aren't completely stomped by the higher caliber bots at tier 8 and tier 10. And so, I mean, the, bo the bots ignore you half the time. I mean, a lot of humans ignore you half the time, I suppose. But um, the, taking out humans is, is incredibly important uh, at this tier simply because they're the only thing that's really viable enemy. So we've got three sectors here. Um, we're up on capture points. We're going to try to head to the center. Yeah, I knew that they were going to be capturing that, that um, sector on the far end there. And we're taking advantage of our altitude performance. Um, again, the tier four heavy fighters have such a superior altitude uh, ability compared to so many of the other planes at this tier. You really want to take advantage of that. We're at 4,200 feet, which is way higher than a SCUA. Should be really any multi-roll at this tier should be. And so we can definitely take advantage of that. Um, see what we can do here there we go all right so our friendlies captured the center and so let's go ahead and let's uh knock out some of these bombers while we're going to the center here still up by 100 capture points 
really not even thinking in terms of what we need to do to win. Uh, really, at this point, I'm just I want to keep shooting stuff that's in front of me. And knowing that that the we keep flipping from three sector zone to two sector zone to three sector zone, and that there's not really a, a scenario that we're gonna get out capped four sectors to one, I'm not stressing out at this point. Blenheim is is super strong aircraft. Uh, you've got four bombs on it, allows you to do some air to ground damage. He's got this really cool turret on the top that has full 360 degree ability other than you know hitting your, your own tail uh, that, that gives you flexibility that you don't normally have with some of the other planes you can see my my turret was actually turned all the way forward there to help shoot the plane in front of me Let's see if we can't get this guy now yep, we'll just keep going down and capture this sector I'm not stressing out too much really not liking the, uh, the skippiness of of the gameplay here um, but that's okay um, I don't have this plane specialized can I kill this guy thank you I'm trying to save my my friendly heavy fighter here let's go into the actual uh, rear turret you see it's not like super strong but it's annoying <laughs> annoying is Annoying is good enough at tier 4. Alright, so again, we're not uber stressing. We're back up to three sectors. The bots are going to do the majority of their work for you. Um, our goal is really just to be taking down aircraft, killing the humans when we see the humans, making sure that we don't go down four sectors to one, and uh, going from there. Squall line will be in, in just a little while. We'll see what we can do against this P.38. Uh, a very strong tier three heavy fighter. Are you gonna ram me? I'll ram you. I can do that. P38 is a very maneuverable tier three heavy fighter. That's why so many people like it. It's also got really heavy hitting cannons. Unfortunately, he's gonna respawn again since he died right before Squall Line. Lucky him. And here we go. Here is a multi roll fighter up way higher than they should be. Completely. Completely just wide open to, to being torn apart, right? So we need to go ahead and we need to capture a sector. We're still up on points. I'm not super stressing out about this. But we do need to make sure that we um, capture a sector. Drop the bombs there. I like bombs at this tier. You just drop them, fire, and forget, really. Let's make sure we don't uh, lawn dart at the end of a battle here. I only do that in my javelin, not in my blenum. Uh, the skippies again trying not to crash here got nothing else really to worry about yeah there's some fighters around here but nothing you know nothing too crazy and killing that heavy fighter uh, allowed us to capture this sector anyway we're now up four sectors to one so we're we're truly um you know on top in this particular battle and we can just kind of uh, ride off into the sunset here. Looks like there's another plane kind of sort of inbound. So we'll try to cut him off. Now look, it's a skua at too high of an altitude. I don't believe it. So let's go ahead, take advantage of the situation. Hopefully melt him down. There we go. Actually, the rear gunner got that kill. I just got a self-defense uh, badge. It's kind of funny. It's like uh, in World of Warships where you get close quarters uh, expert award. Um, it is what it is. So this is a battle of me just trying to calibrate my, um, you know, my system. Let's see what we can actually do when it's cleared up. All right, and so now we're into our second battle here. I didn't even realize uh, that my first battle actually didn't even have sound. Um, for when I first played it. I was literally just trying to test out um, the gameplay. And so that first battle was just like no sound, uh, no you know, no recording, just the, the background. So I don't know if you can tell, I can tell right away. Much smoother video play, gameplay here. Uh, better ability to actually, you know, interact with my surroundings. Um, not seeing uh, some craziness when it comes to the um, 
interactions with the other planes. Let's see if I can get a bomb drop off here. Mm, kind of, kind of okay. Um, and we're going to go after these air defense aircraft. So, why do I like this plane? Well, I like it at the tier because it can... If I'm going to play at this tier, I want something that can do a little bit of everything. Granted, the BF-110B can certainly do a little bit of everything. BF-110B hits harder um, and does less ground damage. So I like this if I, if I feel like I need to be able to do some ground damage and be able to capture sectors. Kind of like a multi-role fighter, right? And that's the big perk to the British heavy fighters in general, is they've got a lot of flexibility with air-to-ground capabilities that you don't necessarily find on the other heavy fighters. The Americans have that capability up until Tier 7. Uh, the Well, up, up including Tier 7. And, and then lose it at tier 8 and above. The um, the German heavy fighters never really have that air-to-ground capability, and that's fine. They do great with their you know, air, air capabilities. The British, I think, and especially once you get above this plane, the, the bow fighter, Mosquito, Hornet, uh, P-1056 for sure, to a lesser extent, the, the P-228, all have really good air-to-air -air capabilities as far as firepower is concerned just phenomenal cannons and machine guns um, and then great air-to-ground capabilities obviously they sacrifice quite a bit of altitude um, some of the planes have lower airspeed uh, but I mean that's what you get that's that's the balanced approach it's what you get for having such great guns and uh, good air-to-ground capabilities. The Blenheim doesn't have that kind of uh, air-to-air capabilities, um, but it is Tier 4. You've got some flexibility with maneuverability, um, and you've got those bombs, four bombs, so that gives you some flexibility as far as your... Eek! That was close. As far as... Uh, it's still close. Stop it! As far as that flexibility is concerned. Speaking of a BF-110B, let's uh, make sure we get ourselves straightened out here. Hitting the boost a little bit. Is he paying attention? He is not. And reach out and touch somebody with these 20 millimeter cannons. Heck yeah, we are. Just strong enough. Mwah. All right, now we got a BF-109B. We got all the Bs around here, huh? He's not really paying attention. Let's go right to our uh, rear gunner here. Is he too far behind? He is. And we're still pulling away. So, dive down a little bit here and see if we can't turn back around. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and do that. We need to pay attention to the B. Nope, he's gone. So, no need to pay attention. On top of that, we're in another five sector map at tier four. So it's really just, we don't need to capture all the sectors. We just need to capture three of the four of the five, excuse me. And then they're gonna continue to flip around. So we're playing defense a little bit here, simply simply because that guy's in front of me more than anything else. Trying to kill the planes that are nearby. Not really stressing out about the fact that um, they're about to capture one of our sectors. We're gonna be capturing one of their sectors, right? So. Again, unless unless one of the humans on the enemy team really dictates some sort of change, I'm just going to take advantage of what's in front of me, and I'm not stressing out at Tier 4. Again, this is the reason I don't play Tier 4 a lot. Like, it's just not, it's not a big challenge. Now, if this was Tier 8 and above, or even the mid-tiers, like, you can't just kind of sit and hold on to a sector and dick around with the, uh, with the enemy XP-44 here. Um, although this... It's fun. <laughs> um, at tier 5 and above, you're going to run into trouble by def when you're defending in a heavy fighter. You it's not what this plane is built for. It's meant to be attacking sectors. And again, it's also meant for killing bombers. And there's a bomber in front of me. So, yeah. I'll take it. XP-44, I don't know what he's doing, but he's not killing me. He's going too high, that's for sure. If, if I'm at my altitude limit, then... He's definitely at his altitude limit. Hey, there's those C6s we were talking about earlier. Luckily, it's a bot, so it's got to deal with crap RNG. C6 is only really excellent when you've got a pilot on it that, that can maximize its um, 
um, accuracy. All right, so now the next closest thing is, you know, in their sector. We're about to get air supremacy, unless they're able to capture a sector on theirs. Nice, they do, so that makes me feel better about capturing this sector. And actually, they've captured a, another air base, too. So, um, ugh. It's about to drop a bomb. Didn't need to drop a bomb. Cool. We've got both military bases, though. This is going to get really bad really quickly for the enemy team. Again, if this is one of those situations where I was like, oh, crap, we, we were down by a bunch of points and we need to we need to do something about it. Capturing both military bases is phenomenal uh, step to reversing our fortunes, right? We don't have that issue. We were already up by 150 points. And so uh, what we need to do really is just try to get as many kills as we possibly can at one point because the game's going to be over soon. Might even get caught out by this BF-109B. Nope. That's good. He was ignoring us for whatever reason. He's probably going to die soon. He's going head on versus... He's going head on versus two heavy fighters. We actually got... This is a tier 5 battle. I didn't mention it earlier. You can tell by the P-38F that we've got on our team. Uh, the American heavy fighters don't start until tier 5. And so, if you see an American Heavy Fighter, well, you must be in a Tier 5 or Tier 6 battle. This could be in a Tier 7, and, and one of the P-38Js gets downgraded to you. Uh, but we're still being effective. So this Tier 5 battle, still not stressing out. Uh, I have no real reason to stress out. We've got a really good uh, pilot in the P-38F on our team. Um, at least a very effective P-38F pilot, so... Um, I don't think I've ran into them before this particular battle, or if I did, I don't recall it. So if you got two really effective pilots, and I'm going to call myself an effective pilot in this particular battle, um, you know, it, it can be pretty detrimental to the enemy team. And I do mean effective is just like, you know, taking care of what's in front of me. Uh, I'm explaining why I'm doing that. If this was a higher tier battle or if there was m more enemies that were effective, then I'd have to change my strategy for sure. But, you know, I was, was able to see that the uh, enemy pilots were not really paying attention to me. And again, at tier 4 and below, you just have to focus on the enemy humans. Uh, you will regret your life choices. So almost 17,000 personal points. I actually got less personal points in this battle than in the previous battle. But considering how quickly this battle was, was over, um, I'll take that as a bigger win, to be honest. Um, yeah. And I got a Guardian in a Plenum. What the heck is wrong with me? Let's take a look at both results. All right. You can see that this is the first battle because the flag in the background is still skipping around like a nut. Um, we've got 18,000 personal points, 15 air kills, two ground targets killed, you know, 3,500 damage and 4,500 damage, respectfully. And now you can see that I fixed it. Um, I actually changed the game from like windowless uh, or borderless mode to just full screen. And that's what fixed it. So that's the difference between this game and the second game. Let's take a, take a look at the second results. All right, so the second battle, we got 13 kills. Two ground damage. We did a little bit more air damage. A, basically the same amount of ground damage. Had a lot of support uh, from the fluffiest tank there, which is a great name. Um, obviously, they've got a much faster plane, so they're going to be able to go around the, the, the map a little bit more. Um, and the enemy team just wasn't as effective as I'm sure they would have liked to have been. Um, the fact that the game didn't end even quicker is actually kind of, kind of crazy. Um... And so, yeah, that's the Blenheim. Blenheim F Tier 4 British Heavy Fighter. So, as I said, I went in and specialized this between the, the first and second battle. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put Gun Sight on here. Really no reason to put anything else at Tier 4. We want accuracy, accuracy, accuracy. You're in a Heavy Fighter. I want to separate myself from uh, the other planes. Upgraded engine is perfectly acceptable here. Again, we're going to go ahead and get ourselves some extra speed. Um... You can also do the boost system. It's completely up to you. I'm doing a either gas-operated action or long gun barrel in this kind of situation. Again, it's Tier 4. I don't necessarily overly stress out about the choices with this. Um, you know, Sometimes you're going to be able to do more damage at longer range. Sometimes you just want to put out uh, more damage in that shorter range. When it comes to the consumables, these I do find is, is helpful. Now... 
whether or not you get 10 extra seconds of boost or just making sure that you can get your engines back in, I think getting the engines back in and going is going to be more helpful. At tier 4, you're able to, to really not stress out about your overall boost availability. Say you, I mean me. And so just making sure my engines are still up and running is most important. All right, and here we are actually in game. So those were, were previously recorded battles, um, which makes the video recording a little less crisp, um, but it just allows me to just fly and not worry about commenting while I'm flying. I can literally just focus on what's going on around me. Or when you're flying tier four, not focusing at what's going on around you and, and still like you feel like you can be effective. So I did want to show off uh, just make a quick quick touch point on the British heavies. I know I mentioned them as, as a full line. I absolutely, I, I honestly just adore these particular um, planes. And I've got the SE-100 as a technical British plane right now, but that's, that's a different conversation. So you start off here with the Blenheim. And honestly, you just get really good planes all the way up. Uh, most people will focus on the bow fighter and how good it is, mainly because the rear gunner is farther forward and can put significant firepower when combined with um, all the cannons that you get for 20 millimeters and um, the six 303 Brownings combined with four more Brownings. So you're technically having 10 Brownings firing forward if you, you uh, maneuver it that way. Can be pretty significant uh, but the blenheim should not be disregarded yeah it's only two 20 millimeter cannons and two brownings well excuse me just one browning excuse me uh the one out here on the wing but two 20 millimeter cannons at tier four can still be pretty significant and on top of that you've got the um the turret that can help out i mean i got got a kill uh, a self-defense expert kill with that turret uh can be pretty significant Overpowered by no means, but being able to do some, some decent damage to the ground and to the air is pretty significant. Um, you go from the bow fighter to the or from the Blenheim to the bow fighter to the mosquito here that has four 20 millimeter cannons and four Brownings, then uh, and, and two 500 pound bombs. And you get some good rockets here. Great overall air to ground and air to air capabilities. Reasonably good speed. I really enjoy this plane. Um, I can't say enough about the Mosquito. You go from that to the Hornet, which I thought at first was going to be kind of a downgrade because you lose the machine guns and you only get four 20 millimeter cannons. The difference is these cannons are a significant jump up over the Mosquito and they hit like just a ton of bricks. On top of that, you actually get 2,000 pound bombs. Think about that. A t literally a ton of bomb drop. Um, and then you get your eight rockets to go with that. From there, you have your um, the Piggy, that's the P-1056. Same 1,000-pound bombs. Um, and you have four 20-millimeter cannons. Wait a minute, what's going on here? Oh, it, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm misreading this. I said four more 20-millimeter cannons. You have four 20-millimeter cannons on the center, but then two 40-millimeter cannons on the outside here. Absolutely wreck ground attackers and bombers. And you've got the ability to do your own air-to-ground um, um, strikes. Really, really nice. Then you jump up to the P228 with four 30-millimeter cannons. They're all centrally located. They um, aren't as fast firing as the German 30s, but they reach out further. I actually prefer these 30s in most scenarios, but it's kind of six of one, half dozen of another. You get a bunch of rockets, like an absolute ton, 16 of these rockets. They can be a little ineffectual because your plane is so unmaneuverable that getting and, and quite quick. So getting into the angle to be able to fire your rockets can sometimes lead to scary situations considering you lose the bombs. Um, I'll actually take the rockets off on this quite a bit, especially if I'm in a flight. Um, and that way I just get more airspeed and I can let my flight mate be the air to ground person. What's funny about this line is you end with a javelin, which I absolutely love, but it's not very similar to any of the previous planes. What do I mean by that? Well, you may have noticed there's no bombs or rockets on this plane. Um, you've got the same 30 millimeter cannons, but they're out on the wing, which can lead to some odd scenarios when you're trying to shoot like a small fighter. That small fighter, especially those pesky Japanese fighters, 
can kind of sit right in between your freaking cannons and you completely miss them. That being said, this plane is incredibly fast, although it is the slowest of the three tier 10 heavies. Um, but it does have the best maneuverability, so if you ever want to, you know, get into a dogfight with an HG3 or an XF90, you're going to easily outturn them. Um, and your guns just hit like a ton of bricks against planes like that that are that are slightly larger. So that is the line, the, the British heavy line. One that I completely enjoy, but is not, um, not for the faint of heart. You definitely need to know what's going on around you because some of these planes... Um, don't have the capability of, of outspeeding an enemy or um, you know getting away by high altitude. These are actually relatively low altitude performance uh, heavy fighters. Their flexibility, I'm sorry, their strength is in their flexibility. The being able to do air to ground damage as well as air to air um, damage is balanced by their low altitude and okay-ish airspeed. So Keep that in mind when you're going down this line. Don't think that you're just getting a plug-and-play version of the Americans or the Germans. It's something different completely. Something very um, fun, or at least it can be, but could also be very frustrating if, uh, if you're trying to play them in, in a manner outside their envelope. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this uh, seal clubbing extraordinaire uh, gameplay in the Blenheim. And I will continue to be posting uh, content on both World of Warplanes and probably still doing some uh, Dark Tide uh, videos in the future as well. So I hope you, hope you enjoyed that kind of content. Thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.